uh, we can see that uh, the sector, the industry sector that is projected to have the highest increase in this decade is going to be the healthcare and social assistance sector with an increase of 1.6% and uh, that corresponds to about 4 million new jobs uh, in, the, in these years. And uh, if we focus in particular on the nursing perfection within the healthcare um, sector, we can see that these are different type of nurses. We can see that the average in this column, the average percentual nurse employment growth in these years is going to be of the 19.5% as an average. And this is interesting because the average expected increase in all other occupation is about 5%. So it's 5% in all occupation against the 19.5% increase in the nursing profession specifically. So. Uh, there is, a, as we can see, so we, there is a high demand of nurses. Uh, the problem is that uh, this high demand is not corresponded by an equal offer. So there is a shortage in nursing. And uh, there are three main factors that, uh, can that are contributing to this uh, shortage. And uh, one, the first one is the fact that uh, senior citizens are increasing, the number of senior citizens is increasing a lot. And uh, uh, with that also of chronic diseases. Um, Second factor is that uh, a portion of the workforce is retiring. So it's expected that about 1 million nurses will retire in the, ten, in the next 10, 15 years. Uh, so this will create a lack again of nurses. Plus, uh, third factor is that limited school capacities, capacity. Uh, there is a lack of clinical sites, lack of uh, faculty that can support uh, an adequate uh, preparation for students. So, uh, last year, only last year, 80,000 students, applicants were turned away because there were not enough, there were not a structure, there was not a structure to support their education. So uh, this is the general situation in which uh, a career in nursing is uh, situated right now. So, but when we talk about nursing, what are we talking about? Because uh, uh, the figure of a nurse is, uh, is not just one profession, actually. It's one profession, but with different uh, uh, characteristics. Um, there are different specialties, there are different education levels that are required. Um, so from this uh, graph that shows uh, different career paths in healthcare, if we focus on the nursing one, that is the red boxes, we can see that there are different uh, career paths, different levels. And if we break it down, we can say that uh, um, education wise, uh, different level of education uh, corresponds to different nursing type. Or different nursing type require different uh, levels of education. So the basic one is uh, the licensed practical nurse that uh, uh, is, uh, requires a nursing certificate or diploma that will take one year to get. We have registered nurses that instead uh, require either an associate degree in nursing of about two years or a bachelor of nursing that is, will take about four years to get. We have an advanced practical registered nurse that instead required a master's degree, six, eight years of studying. And lastly, at the end of the spectrums, we have the doctor of nursing practice, that it's a doctoral degree that requires, again, seven, eight years of studying. So uh, different nursing type, different education, different responsibilities at the same time. I, I will just detail uh, the licensed practical nurse uh, that provide the basic care, uh, for patients like uh, monitor vital signs, change dressing, administer, administer medications, always under supervision of uh, a registered nurse or doctors. At the end of the spectrum, we have the doctor of nursing practices that, that is a totally different type of uh, profession in the sense that the, uh, the DMP is, uh, uh, can give uh, uh, direct patient care, but is more involved in managing the care of patients and uh, patient populations, more involved in administration, in nursing and healthcare organizations, more involved in de developing and implementing health policies. I will leave the uh, responsibilities of the registered nurse and the, of the nurse practitioner, that is a, a type of uh, a PRN, to uh, Enrico and Regina that will tell you more uh, what is uh, your, their direct experience, what are their direct responsibilities uh, when they work. Um, so nursing has different level of education, we said different uh, um, responsibilities, there are different specialties of nursing. So this is a list, it's definitely not complete, there are much, many more, uh, so a different, many, many options available. 
again also workplaces uh, the nurse can choose to uh, work in very different settings again here is a simple list but there are many more so the, uh, the picture is very complex uh, nursing is a, a as a variety of options and a career path that uh, uh, can be almost frightening <laughs> Uh, so um, the question is, how do I decide uh, what to do, which steps I have to take uh, in order to become a nurse? So I just put down some uh, steps uh, that uh, can help uh, in the process of deciding which is my path uh, in the nursing career. So the first question I would ask is, do I have the qualities to be a good nurse? Uh, there are some traits that are typical of the nurse, as every list has its own limits, but this is just to give an idea of some characteristics that uh, uh, usually are required to a nurse that works, particularly if a clinical nurse. So uh, definitely good communication skills, uh, good interpersonal skills, uh, attention to details, uh, good decision making, problem solving abilities, needs to be action oriented, empathetic, and with solid stamina, because uh, uh, nursing, uh, being a nurse requires a lot of energy. Uh, in this sense, I think that uh, a good suggestion is that uh, shadowing, shadowing a nurse uh, to understand better what uh, the job is about uh, is always a good option to understand, to really have a sense of what, uh, what it involves to be a nurse. If you think that then the, uh, being a nurse is something that you can really uh, you, you feel like you could really do it, then the question is, uh, okay, what are the programs that uh, are close to me and that I could attend? So you can research in your area or wherever you are, uh, or wherever you want to study, uh, what are the programs? Starting from understanding, first of all, what type of nurse I want to be. We said we have different levels of nursing, different type of nursing, so LPN, RN, so on. Second, which type of education will I need to get there? And third, what nursing programs fit best in my logistic and my financial situation. So once you went through these questions and you explore uh, what you have available in your areas about, uh, concerning schools, then uh, usually you pick, you pick uh, the one that fits the best. And uh, here then you need to move forward and attend nursing information sessions, applying to the chosen programs. And once you apply, then you prepare to for the entrance exam that you need to take always to, uh, to enter in the program and uh, take the entrance exam. Uh, once uh, you've taken the entrance exam and I said that you have been accepted, uh, you have uh, one, two, four years of studying depending on your, what you've chosen. And in these years, uh, uh, you have uh, the opportunity to explore different, to go in different clinical sites and uh, have a sense of what are the specialties available. Um, so based on uh, your experience during these years uh, and talking to other nurses, connecting, uh, uh, becomes more clear usually what, are your, uh, uh, what is the specialty that you are interested in. And, uh, and then so when the moment comes, you uh, get, go out of school, you finish school, you graduate, you can apply to the job that uh, really fits the most uh, your, uh, your inclination. And uh, uh, the last thing, once uh, you are working, uh, one of the characteristics of the um, nurse, the nursing profession, it is very uh, flexible and very fluid. So uh, you're not, uh, uh, it's not mandatory that once you choose a specialty, you stay in that forever, or that once you are a certain level, you cannot grow. So it is always possible to change path in the, in the nursing profession because it's really fle flexible and the need is, is huge. So you can change path, you can change a uh, specialty, and uh, you can grow also, you continue your education. So you can start from uh, being a licensed practical nurse, you can really go further up in the uh, education, uh, the nursing education. So um, just to give you a sense again, I won't go through all of it because uh, it's, it's too long, but uh, in the choice of uh, uh, being a nurse, these are the pros uh, that, uh, the, that uh, um, you will have as an experience as a nurse. Again, Regina and, uh, and Enrico will talk more directly in, on their experience. This is always limited, so they just uh, give them to a sense, but really they will tell you more from their experience what are the pros of the nursing profession. And obviously there are some cons too that you want to consider. And again, here it's just a simple, uh, simple list. Um, I think that's it for a general introduction. 
here is our, our, our names, our uh, contact information. So if you have any questions uh, in the present, in the future, about uh, anything in the nursing field, please uh, let us know and uh, uh, we are very available to, very happy to answer. I think that uh, Enrico now can uh, continue with uh, his uh, experience as a registered nurse and give you um, Ilaria, can we ask you a question? Can you go back to slide number seven? Sure, yeah. Okay, let me go back. Because it seems to me that uh, whereas we have a general understanding of what the nursing profession is, uh, slide number seven speaks a lot to the possibilities that the nursing career can uh, open up for you. Yeah, yes, it's, it's the same that we saw. So, so this is the starting point. You can start at any, uh, so let's say you start, this is the basic level. And then from here, medical, like medical assistants or respiratory uh, therapy technician, there's a certain number of uh, um, professional figures that are required just the courses or, or uh, just few weeks of preparation and you can become a medical assistant or, or even from the from high school, you can start entering one of these level of uh, preparation. These are usually certificates that will take one year. From here, as I was saying, you can grow in your, uh, in your education and then uh, become a registered nurse again, and deal either with an associate degree or with a bachelor degree that will take two or four years. From here, you can grow even more and become either, a, a, the, this type, either a, um, one of these certified nurse midwifery or nurse practitioner or certified nurse assistant that are all a master degrees, they require a master degree, or here is not included, but you can also follow and become a doctor in nursing, DMP, and that is more of a, as I said, an administrative kind of managing kind of job. Um, so you see that the pathways are different, the type of jobs are very different, uh, and you can start from one level and move, move, change. So you can start as a clinical one, uh, if you become older or the situation changes, I don't know, family situation change, you can switch and uh, decide to take different pathways. So in this sense, it's very fluid, the nursing profession. Okay, so uh, we will share the slides with, uh, with people and they will be able to uh, see a little bit more and then they can ask you questions later on. So um, can we hear from um, Enrico um, as well? Let's see. Hello everyone. I have a question. Is there anyone here discerning the possibility of uh, becoming a nurse or? Just to understand, apparently no. Not at this uh, moment, probably. No, no, no. It was just to it was just to to try to adjust what I what I'm gonna say. But uh, I was asked to to basically share with you my professional journey. Um, well, first of all, thank you, Laria, because um, I mean there's not much time, but you did a great job. And the part of the flexibility we're talking about right now is the, on, on, in the nursing profession is related to the fact that by working, uh, we discover our temperament, what we like more than the most, what, what we are good at. So for example, there's a big difference between <clears throat> working in a ER, and with a lot of adrenaline and being a nurse in a nursing home, no, for example. Um, but uh, based also part, a factor in in the choices is, uh, according to me, is really also temperament and uh, and what you see that you want, what you see that you like the most, what you see that where, where is the kind of. Uh, uh, field where you can express yourself better. Then there are many other choices to make, family and money, and uh, also also the career has to do with that, in my opinion. Uh, anyway, I'm, I'm sharing with you my story, my pr pr professional story. I try to be brief because I, I started this uh, path 28 years ago. So I'm going to try to, to, dis to, to tell you about this 28 years in five minutes. Uh, everything started in the summer of 1992. Uh, it was very clear to me that I didn't want to study anymore. I was 19 years old. 
1920. And uh, it was very clear to me that I wanted to find my job and start my path. And I was very excited about it. Uh, it was very, and I took uh, the summer to, to decide what I wanted to do. I look into different options. Uh, a friend of mine had a small company. I could have become an electrician. Uh, I was very, very much fascinated by uh, restoration of uh, old furnitures, things like that. I love it. I'm still doing it now when I can from time to time. And, um, and um, one day I went to church and uh, out of uh, walking out, I met a friend of mine. And she told me, listen, but what are you thinking of doing? What are you doing? Whatever, what do you want to do? And uh, she told me, I'm going to apply to nursing school. You should come with me. And nursing was something I had thought about, but uh, what stopped me was the fact that I had to study and I didn't want to study. <laughs> uh, but she was going, she told me at that time, uh, uh, sorry, I was born and raised in Italy. So I'm talking about Italy is a little bit of a different system, right? But it was at that time at least, I don't know how is it now, but um, what you have to do is to go apply, do a test and, um, and they would select you or not select you. So I decided, you know what, I'm gonna go. And I did the test and then there was also an interview and then there were <clears throat> more or less 100 people applying for that school and they would choose 30 of them. And I remember very well, they would post uh, like, from number one to number, th number 30, the, the names of the people were selected. And I remember going that, there and my heart was beating fast. I was, uh, I discovered there that I wanted that, that that could have been something for me, finally, something I could do um, with passion. And uh, so I go from the first and I get to 13 and I see my name. I was like, shoot, actually I was selected. <laughs> and then I go to the 30th and I saw also the name of my friend. So, okay. And then I went back to read the list a few times just to make sure I was reading right. It is to say that sometimes, sometimes we choose things uh, because we have very much clear what we want. Sometimes it's just that little intuition that happens and you follow it and it's worth it to do it and uh, you don't know where this is gonna lead you. After 28 years, I'm very happy. I, I, I did that, that they actually selected me, right? Um, just to kind of tell you more, when first day of school, uh, we are these 30 people. Actually, I think at the end they selected 32. And uh, first question is, which person is, uh, why did you choose this profession, this path? And of course, the answer were always, I want to help people. I've always wanted to, to, to be a nurse because I like to help people. But then after, after a while, I became a fr um, friend with one of my classmates. And so just joking, I told her, listen, but I know why you chose to become a nurse. And she was like, why? Because when you were a kid, a child, you watch Candy Candy. Candy Candy was a Japanese cartoon of a nurse that the, the, the girls of my generation, all of them, they watched it. And, and she became white. And she was, yes, it's true, but don't tell anybody, you know? And then just because at that point I was curious, I started going around to my classmates asking the same question. And most of them actually, they became nurses because of that Japanese cartoon. It is to say again, <clears throat> um, it takes, um, it takes uh, sometimes that just that little intuition that is not necessarily clear and really strongly founded on, a, on, a, on great ideals, no? But sometimes it just works that way. And, uh, and this is enough to start. What I discovered starting school is uh, that to study is beautiful, first of all. And I did that through a, through a professor of uh, anatomy and physiology. Human physiology is something incredibly amazing. And I was uh, astonished by, by how our body works, I guess how nature works. 
And I didn't know that. I didn't know that studying was so beautiful and that you could uh, actually be passionate about it. To know, to know uh, reality and go deep into it and to discover more and to discover the connection between things and how these connections make things work. I was uh, the other day with a patient. I do home visits. I'll tell you later a little more, but I do home visits. I've been doing home visits for a long time. And uh, I don't tell you what I, was go what I was doing with that patient because those who don't work in the medical field who are here would get a little... Uh, but uh, uh, I was uh, um, talking with the wife of the patient. She was... A, she wanted to know more the rationale regarding about what I was doing. So I was explaining to him a little bit of anatomy and physiology. And she was in awe and she told me, so that's probably why, let me, let me read it because I, I guess this is how we know that there is a creator. And I told her, yes, that's exactly my experience when I was studying nursing school. Uh, it, 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 it is, um, it is uh, already that part of the profession is, is, quite, uh, is quite beautiful. Um, then, uh, of course, I started seeing patients. I remember, on, mm, I remember many, but in, in particular one patient. During nursing school, this guy was, um, um, he had cancer and he was dying and um, he was a very proud person, um, wouldn't smile, wouldn't ask for help, except that things got really bad for him and he needed help. And one night the wife called because uh, uh, he had an accident, meaning uh, he, he had an episode of incontinence. And, uh, and I remember entering the room and seeing his face. He was totally, totally, completely without any, he, he was wounded, he was wounded, his pride was totally wounded, he had, he had that gaze of a little child completely lost. For him his dignity was, was important and that, that situation uh, completely caught him off guard and, uh, and he accepted, accepted my help. So I accompanied him to the bathroom and I, I helped him to, to clean and change his uh, underwear and everything and uh, i will always remember that face because uh it is uh, probably the first time we, in which clearly i realized that this is my experience when i have someone with a real need in front of me i wake up meaning uh, that need those eyes wake me up it's like someone telling me, wake up, uh, there is something happening here. I need you to be here uh, with all of my person, all of my, my humanity, you know. Uh, so this, is, uh, this has become uh, eventually very clear moving forward because the same thing happened over and over. Um, I started working in a cardiac surgery department, uh, very, very much, um, uh, like you learn a lot. It's, it's a job that is very, I mean, you need to know a lot. You need to learn a lot, very technical. I work in ICU, cardiac surgery. ICU is a very tough environment. It's really, really, you learn a lot, but you, it's like war. It's like no one second you can be distracted. And uh, I've learned a lot from that. Eventually, uh, I became also, and I was very young, too young probably, I became head of department uh, on a cardiac surgery department until I, I received a phone call that was totally unexpected. That changed my life. I'm not gonna go into details, but basically I moved to a different city and I started doing home care basically. And since then, and we are in 2001 now, I, I've been doing home care, um, which means visiting people at home. It is, a, it is a, well, just two quick things. One is I, found, I find this kind of job very much pertinent, very much uh, corresponding to my, my temperament, meaning uh, talking about 
uh, a path to follow um, this this uh, this intuition of the human need and the possibility for this human need to become a path that you walk with the other person that you share moments of life that you share or a path over years that you share is very much what i like and uh, not necessarily this is like a description of what is nursing but it is my path um and um I can tell you many stories, but there is no time. But uh, so I just I just say this that I had in all over all over these years the opportunity to share life with many many people. You enter in a house, you don't know anything, you don't know anyone, and uh, you become part of the life of the patient and the family. And um, and um, there is an aspect. There is pure relationship, but there is an aspect that this relationship is not disconnected from your, your profession. They go together. I give you a, a very, very simple example. CHF is chronic heart failure, which means your heart cannot work really well. And uh, so people with a weak heart, they retain fluids. So there is there is water fluids in your body. You, you see the ankle swelling and, and other stuff. And, but what happened is that in order to, to treat that, you have to take what is called a diuretic, which is a water pill that makes you urinate so that you can get rid of that fluids, those fluids. The problem of, uh, of uh, that medication, especially when you talk about elderly people, is that it makes you go to the bathroom all the time and uh, it might be challenging. So many, many, many people don't take it. And you will discover that not in the hospital, but when they go back home <laughs> because they don't tell anybody. And so uh, just by entering in a relationship, first of all, they tell you that they are not taking it, even though you know already because you see the sign of the fact that they are not taking it, but they are free to tell you. Already, already, the fact that they are free to tell you is a possibility of entering in a in a in a conversation, and then you explain why they should take it, and then you you challenge them and say try it, and then after a few days you tell me how you feel. You will see. You will sleep better at night. You will not wake up catching uh, breath because you cannot breathe, and uh, it works. And so they they tell you, wow. It really works. Sometimes it's not that easy, but it's to say that within, within, without a relationship, let's put it in a positive way, in a relationship also um, you can uh, greatly help people to feel better, really, to feel better. And, and for the illness to progress slower. slower. Um, I skipped a few things, but uh, I just tell you quickly, I, I do hospice now. I moved to a different city recently. I was in Miami, I moved to North Florida, and uh, I had to look for a job. And so I knew what I wanted. I wanted to do home care. I applied to a few companies. Uh, among those, there were some hospice company. And I received a good offer to work on hospice. So this is what I'm doing now. Uh, I go visit people who are dying not all of them but most of them and uh, it is the same thing even uh, even more more clearly dramatic as you can imagine but uh, well I just close I think I, I spoke too much but I just close try, I try to give you a definition my definition of, of what is the nursing protection profession and this is true at any level uh, that um, my, uh, so it is to put together science medical science with a human uh, relationship with a human heart starting from a need the person is one and uh, there is a need for someone who knows what is good for the person from a medical point of view. There is the need for someone to put together everything of that person in a relationship so that this path can become uh, human. And um, so this is 
sort of my definition of the nursing profession and it's true at any level no matter what for me it's very clear and it's also very clear that starting from the beginning and thinking of everything that i've lived so far in my profession the the main uh, sentiment the main uh, uh outcome is that i'm i'm really grateful for everything that i was given by doing this job and uh, all the people that I've met, and many of those, many of them, many, I remember as my dearest friend, some of them taught me big lessons that I needed to, to, to go through, no? Yeah, I think I can close here. Thank you, Enrico. Thank you for sharing your experience with us. It's beautiful. Um, um, so for the shortness of time, um, uh, uh, we will not will not hold any questions now. We'll just go to um, Regina uh, for her testimony, so that uh, we can also move to Elena at some point. Good. I wish I went before Enrico because Enrico, what you said was so beautiful, and I feel like it was something I needed to hear more than people that are inquiring about the nursing profession. It was really beautiful. Thank you. Um, so I've been a nurse. I'm a little bit older than Enrico. I've been a nurse for about 30 years. Um, I started uh, my nursing uh, career. I graduated in the United States from a four-year um, degree. So I went to college for four years. And in order to pay for my tuition, I had a, um, an ROTC scholarship. So um, what it was is they paid for my tuition and in exchange when I graduated, I served in the military as an army nurse um, for about four years, or I, four years. Um, and then I transitioned into civilian nursing. Um, I knew I was a nurse, but maybe not a soldier. So it was a good four years for me. Um, and I've done a lot in nursing, like Enrico said. It's it's such a fluid job, and I really appreciate how he said um, that it's about your temperament. And sometimes you get little inclinations or or little clues, and sometimes you get really big clues. Um, I became a nurse basically um, because I did well in the sciences in school. Um, where I grew up, I grew up in a, in, a, in a city that had a lot of technology. It was uh, where Kodak is in Rochester, New York, which Kodak isn't like it is today. It, it was a very big um, world company. And all the kids in my school were very, the ones that were good in math, just straight math, were the ones that were kind of propelled onto these, these bigger degrees. I was okay in math, but I was very good in science. So I thought, all right, I won't be a doctor, but I'm good with people. I like people. And I knew I could do the program and pass it. So I thought, I, and I wanted to travel. So the whole reason why I became a nurse is I wanted to get out of my small town in Rochester, New, or in Lyman, New York, which is a small city outside of Rochester. And I wanted to be a nurse in the Peace Corps. And I wanted to live in Peru. I never made it to Peru and I never made it to the Peace Corps, but I became a nurse. So um, after the military, uh, I came back to live with my parents for a little bit. I became engaged. And then I took a travel nurse job to the DC area because that's where um, my husband now, my fiance at the time wanted to work. There was a lot of work in the DC area for both of us. And so in, in the United States, you can also travel as a nurse. They um, put you up in an apartment they at a destination you know so i wanted to be in dc and then you basically fulfill a critical need in the in the hospital um most of my clinical well be, my clinical nursing practice was a lot of different things mostly uh critical care a lot of that is temperament i'm a detailed person i like control and nursing, you don't get a lot of control because you have to respond to the other, like Enrico said. But I was maturing on this path. So I did do well in intensive care because you, 
you know, the patients are mostly sedated and on machines and you can look at your monitors and you can give medications and you can be very exacting, right? And you kind of take the, the, the human relationship out of it from somebody talking to you, right? And um, so I did that. Um, it was it, like Enrico said, it's like war. Um, it, it's, it's very high stress, but I know many nurses that have done it for, when I was a nurse in one ICU, um, the nurse on the floor, the most senior nurse was like almost 70 years old and she looked like she was 45 and she did it well and she loved it. And that was obviously her, her domain. And she was, she was a very, very beautiful, great nurse. Um, but for me, with my temperament, um, it kind of burned me out. And so I actually took a break and then I sold advertisement for a while for a nurse's trade magazine during one of the nurses shortage. Back then, you know, people didn't use the internet as much. They still looked at print and nurses would use these magazines and, and look for jobs. And so I sold advertisement, but I know, recognize that I miss nursing so, so much. Stepping away really made me recognize that that's what I was meant to do. So I went back in, I did other things like case management for a while, which I really liked, which was taking care of um, insurance reimbursement and discharge planning, getting a really medically complex patient home or in a nursing home or in rehab and it, it sounds like a very dry job, but actually I really loved it because you really did have to enter into relationship with not only the, the patient and their families, but also all the people that were involved in the care of this person. So I enjoyed that. But I, I had an illness during this time. I'm fine now. But I realized that, you know, nursing, like Ilaria said, there's a lot of physicality. And I thought, oh my goodness, I want to be a nurse. I know I want to do this for, for, for a long time. And do I have the physical stamina for um, the bedside and all this other stuff? So it prompted me to, to um, look into advanced practice nursing and nurse practitioner. I wanted to go deeper into my nursing. I wanted... Um, to have a little bit more autonomy and independence on being able to craft a plan of care for my patients. Um, and I got my energy from, uh, from that patient interaction. I didn't want to do, um, not that it's not great, I didn't want to do management or the, all those other things. It just wasn't me. So I took, uh, I went to school and I picked a program that was adult geriatric. Um, particularly because I think it, it really goes deeply into the adult. Um, some of the other programs for me being a little OCD, I like detail. Uh, the depth wasn't to my liking to do family, which was from, from birth to natural death. And then you have mother, baby, and all that other stuff. That was way too overwhelming. And I also really like the older adult. I've always loved geriatrics. I think as a nurse, they'll tell you, you know, you're either drawn to the pediatric patient or you're drawn to the geriatric patient or you're drawn to just a particular niche. And again, I think it's your patients that are really responding to your need. You know, they, they give you clues in what's going to bring you the most joy, right? So I always loved my older patients and I always loved a complex patient because I like details and I like to focus on one thing at a time, unlike maybe five or 10 patients with all these other issues, I like all these issues in just one patient. And that's your geriatric patient. They usually have a lot of going on. So I graduated um, from advanced practice uh, from my um, school. I did it very slowly. Uh, I, I worked full time and I completed my degree over about four years. Um, partly because the hospital system for, that I worked at gave me tuition reimbursement. So I didn't want to expend a lot of my own money and I wanted to take my time with it. And I also, from a financial aspect, I needed to work. The great thing about that though, is I was 
having the doctors that worked with me or the other advanced practice people, I had them school me and teach me while I was pursuing my degree. So for me, it was a great way to, to pursue it. The other thing I want to stress is um, there are a lot of, of individuals that go into nursing with the goal of being a nurse practitioner or advanced practice. And I personally don't recommend that. I think if you are drawn to diagnose and treat um, and that's something you want to do and being a, 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 a physician is not something that you um, want to follow, I would recommend physician's assistant, to be perfectly honest, because they're, um, and I don't want to get off track, but their programs are meant for that individual that knows that they want that kind of a, a um, lifestyle or they want that decision making because it covers things much differently. Nurse practitioners really have to pull deeply on their experience as clinical nurses. And that is, and that's just a fact. I will hang my hat on that because I've lived it. And, and even being a nurse for almost 20, or I was a nurse for 20 years when I assumed the nurse practitioner role. And it was a, a huge, change in my life. It was a worthwhile change, but if I, I feel as if I didn't have all that clinical experience, and I'm not saying you have to do 20 years, but I'm saying if I didn't have that, I think it would have been a much more difficult transition. Um, so since I've been a nurse practitioner, um, I've taken care of the frail um, uh, geriatric patient in both um, nursing home and um, most recently, the past um, four years, it's been in house calls, medical house calls in Rico. I, I love it. Um, and instead, I take care of frail elders that can't get out of the house to see their doctor. And we were finding all these people just deteriorating at home because they didn't have a provider to go into the home and to care for them. Um, so on my team, we're, we're going to get our second doc. Thank you, uh, Lord, because that's great. And then it's um, a physician's assistant and um, four nurse practitioners. And then we have nurses and social workers um, to help with all the, the things that these frail, um, medically complex uh, older adults need. And um, I go to different homes throughout the day. And instead of them going out to their doctor, or nurse practitioner, or primary care provider, we go into the home. Um, the pros about this, it is very gratifying for me um, to be able to craft the care, um, to be able to have a little bit more autonomy, and also to put my nursing spin on things because, um, and the docs on my teams are invaluable, don't get me wrong, but we approach things a little differently and when you really collaborate well with your, your physician staff, it, it's just a beautiful experience. And we learn from each other every day. Um, so the pros is the gratitude and the relationship with the patient. Um, the cons uh, for nurse practitioner, the hours are very, very long, very, very long. Um, I'm not uh, hourly, I'm salary. And so my average day, I mean, if I'm having a good day, it's 10 hours. Uh, okay day is 12, and then sometimes it's even longer. Um, it just depends on what, your pa what happens to your patient. The responsibility is, is pretty heavy sometimes. Um, that's the other thing. Um, another pro is financially, it's, it's, it's more than nursing. However, if I were to add up all the hours that I work, it would probably end up the same. Um, and that's it, I guess. Thank you for uh, thank you for sharing your your experience and your about your job. So, um, the sh uh, in the shortness of time, uh, we're sorry we cannot <laughs> entertain much question, but uh, we'll we'll definitely um, share um, all this great uh, testimony and, uh, and and the presentation that Ilaria made. So we will now move on to our next speaker.
um, Dr. Elena Colicino. So she'll be talking us, um, uh, like telling us about her perspective on the role of biostatistician. Hi everyone, uh, let me share my screen. Can you see my screen? Can you hear me? Yes, uh, okay. yes, Elena, we can see. Okay, right. that's great. Okay, so basically I share my experience um, for being a statistician during this um, COVID era, era. So basically everything started during college and when I was in college many friends of mine had a similar reaction to the one of this guy when they studied statistics. So, and statistics make them cry a lot because it condenses a lot of mathematics and computer programming and sometimes multiple languages at the same time. So, um, sometimes can be very tricky and challenging. But the reason why I became a statistician is because I've met several mentors and friends that changed my path and actually they help me see the beauty that statistics uh, can provide because it's a flexible tool and can be applied to several fields um, and also through statistics but uh, especially through collaborations i can learn multiple things every day so this was something that i really like uh, and I keep um, loving. So uh, also another thing that uh, struck me is that uh, using statistics, I can contribute to public health and medical guidelines. And um, specifically everything started because I, I've met a guy uh, who changed some oncological treatments through statistics. And then I decided to be more engaged with that. So um, what does it mean working as a biostatistician? In general, for me, it's like reading this verse. Uh, this is a poem by, it's a verse uh, extracting from a poem by Peter Pereira. And it seems very simple, but actually it's not. So 11 plus 2 is 12 plus 1. So if we look at numbers, this is a very simple and easy equation that also people, I mean children in elementary school can solve it. So because 11 plus 2 is equal to 13 and 12 plus 1 is equal to 13. Yeah, but it's just that. So if we look closer, actually, 11 plus 2 and 12 plus one are one the anagram of the other. And actually this, uh, uh, the title of this uh, poem is Anagrammer. It's a very nice and uh, funny poem. So, so we have uh, uh, discovered new thing if we look better at this verse and we understand so much better what the, the author of this uh, uh, poem wants to convey. So if we, if we look closer, we can also see that uh, 11 plus 2 is composed by 13 letters, like 12 plus 1. So basically, there is uh, 11 plus 2 is 13, but there's also 13 letters. So basically, we have an intrinsic solution within the question. So uh, basically, so this is for saying that if we look closer, we can see multiple things. And for me, being a statistician is like uh, peeling an onion, so with several layers. And in this case, at each layer, we unveil some information and we are able to enrich the meaning and the interpretation of the, the verse or the data or the reality itself. 
So actually this verse became extremely popular for its translation. Uh, because uh, if you think it's challenging just in English, translating these verbs, this verse, maintaining all characteristics is very challenging. So I put here um, a link for that if you are Italian, because of course it's an uh, Italian translation. I'm sure that um, other people were involved in a different translation in other languages. So, of course, uh, we have this inner beauty of statistics that is, uh, um, that is coming from data, but we don't have to forget uh, the big picture. So, as a statistician, we offer our talent for modeling data and understanding what is happening. But uh, our main goal is collaborating with others and in order to provide better guidelines. And here, um, a Washington State superintendent said, if public health is the priority, collaboration is the strategy. Uh, and this is something that I always uh, remind myself. So because I have a lot of collaborations um, at the same time, so sometimes it's very challenging, um, especially because we have multiple tasks at the same time. And for this reason, I try to be uh, efficient and to create multiple statistical functions that can be easily adapted, um, but it's not always the case. So I spend a lot of time analyzing data. Uh, and for this reason, I play a central role in understanding those data. I have to say that during this comic COVID-19 pandemic, I spent a lot of time analyzing those data, especially from my institution, uh, which is an hospital, a uh, COVID-19 hospital. So talking about data, mm, in God we trust, but all others bring data. So in general, uh, statisticians are very skeptical, skeptical, and so do I. Uh, I am, I am. And, but in general, we are very curious to understand the better the data. At the same time, we try to respect the data as much as we can throughout uh, uh, the entire analysis. Because we realize, especially in our field, that uh, behind each number, there is a person. Especially in public health, those, uh, this, those people have conditions and diseases. So it's a great opportunity for us to understand what's, it ha what's happening, but also at the same time, uh, it's a great responsibility and be fair to, um, and we want to be fair to those data. So um, we also try to make our analysis 100% reproducible, so these uh, help others, but also um, help the medical field. So we try to share the code as much as we can. Uh, there are several repositories for that. And we try to make public data publicly available when it's possible. Of course, this facilitates more uh, advancement of theoretical statistics as well. So uh, I have just, uh, I think one of the last slide is basically how can we become biostatistician? And there are more conventional and unconventional way. Uh, so of course, uh, the traditional ways uh, with a PhD or master in statistics or any of related field. Uh, and then unconventional ways uh, where you are more prone to analyze data and you have strong experience with that, or you have attended multiple courses, um, also online, or you read a lot of books, or you are part of several communities. Uh, I have, um, so 
just to advertise few things. I'm part of the Our Lady New York City group and we are actually hosting um, the authors speaking about uh, their new book, Build a Career in Data Science, on July 21st. So, and here also I, um, I have some potential groups that you can um, follow on Twitter or on Meetup in New York, if you are in New York. And that's it for me. It's very, very easy talk and um, I'm sorry to go to have been after the other two um, three guys it was very moving and touching the previous presentation they were very touching the previous presentation thank you elena i think um yeah i would i mean your your like introduction to bias statistics and how statistics helps and how one can basically um uh, no, uh, pursue this path uh, is also very important uh, for all of us to hear so um all right so i think uh, that's uh, pretty much sums up our uh, evening tonight um if you have uh, any questions uh, we we are almost we actually over time uh there are any pressing questions we can spend a few minutes otherwise i think we can um call it night so so one thing is um we will we'll be hosting this sort of uh, a seminar um, um, bi-weekly so basically it, um, every two weeks we're going to do this so uh, stay tuned for our uh, email for our next presentation where we'll again be talking about uh, related professional um, uh, development or any or other professions um, uh, who, uh, and how we can go about um, uh, following that so is there any question for any of our speakers? Certainly we'll be um, sharing uh, um, the slides. And uh, since these videos are being recorded, um, if uh, we can, we will, uh, at a time, we will um, share it with people. Okay, so <laughs> thank you. Uh, there is no question so far. So thank you, everybody. Thank you for coming. Um, it was great having all of our speakers and uh, it was great having you to all. Thank, thank you for having us. Okay, bye thank everybody. You. Bye. Bye. bye.